Hello, and welcome to Crafted Narratives. This is a podcast where every stitch tells a story. I'm Rachel, your host and a fellow maker, and I'm so excited to invite you into a world where creativity and personal journeys intertwine. In Crafted Narratives, we will explore the art of making, from knitting and crochet to all things fiber arts and beyond. But this podcast is about much more than just techniques or project show and tell. It's about the story of the maker behind the crafts. Each episode, we will sit down with makers and crafters to uncover the narrative they've woven into their work. Our guest speakers will join us here to share the inspiration behind the design or what drives them to create, the challenges faced along the way, and the joy found in the creative process. Every story is unique and every maker has a tale to tell. Crafted Narratives is here to give those stories a voice and to celebrate the diverse, vibrant world of handmade art. Join us as we stitch together the threads of creativity and storytelling, one crafted narrative at a time. Today's episode is a bit different than what you can expect moving forward because this is a totally brand new idea and I wanted to share the origin story. Crafted Narratives is an idea that came to me almost immediately after attending Flock Fiber Festival. The event ended on Sunday, August 11th, and after getting home very late at night on Monday, August 12th, I was lying in bed wide awake hours after my usual bedtime, my usual bedtime, and my mind was just racing with ideas. Something that happened at Flock that I wasn't necessarily expecting but loved so much was getting to hear other makers talk about how they got into fiber arts, how their creative journey began, and why they create. I got to watch fellow makers experience meeting some of the people who have inspired them in the first place or hearing how crafting or fiber arts has helped them to overcome hurdles and it was a really incredible experience. I think that a lot of us have very similar stories on how we got into crafting or have had similar experiences with crafting and where it's helped you to overcome difficult times. I couldn't stop thinking about this and how much I loved getting to witness these moments. Now, to sort of cut off in another direction, part of my full-time job includes leading and hosting a live weekly educational, ed educational interview series on the company's social media platforms. I absolutely love doing these videos, but I do feel sometimes that I have this overwhelmingly full pot of creative energy, and I can't necessarily put, those, put that energy into those videos. I've thought to myself over and over that I would love to do interviews like this, but in a different setting or with my own creative spin on things. So back to me lying awake at 2 a.m. thinking about all of my takeaways from Flock, it hit me. I already have a YouTube channel. I can host my own interview series on my own channel, creating a space for makers and crafters to come together to share their own story. Stories are really important to me. I'm somebody with a very vivid imagination and a dream of being a writer and with a huge love of reading. Stories are the threads that connect us. In the world of crafting, each piece that we create is more than just the, th the sum of its stitches. It's a reflection of our experiences, our emotions, and the journeys we've taken. I think about this a lot, especially when I'm spinning fiber. Spinning really causes me to just slow down but with also knitting as well. Everything that I'm feeling or experiencing in that moment is literally being spun or stitched into my project. And it's just really incredible to think about. When we share the stories behind our crafts and uh, behind ourselves as makers, we open a window into our lives, allowing others to see the passion, dedication, and sometimes even the struggles that go into making something by hand. I believe that these stories are what make the crafting community so rich and so vibrant. They bring us all together, showing us that even though we might come from different backgrounds and work with different materials, we all share a common love for creating. When, I hear, when we hear somebody else's story, it can spark inspiration, it can provide comfort, or it can even just remind us that we're not alone in our creative endeavors. So by sharing these narratives on Crafted Narratives, I hope to build a space where makers can feel seen and feel heard, and where listeners can find inspiration in the diverse stories of fellow crafters. I want this podcast to be a celebration of human connection, 
that lies in the heart of every craft, a place where we can all feel more connected, inspired, and uplifted by the power of our shared stories. So I hope that you will join me on this new adventure. And if you or someone you know is interested in sharing your story in another chapter, please email me so we can connect. This is a brand new idea, something that I'm just starting out with. So I really hope that you'll feel inspired by this and maybe spread the word to get others who might feel inspired to join me on this journey as well. So today I'm going to start us off by sharing my own story and introducing myself as the creator of this podcast. I'm gonna, because this is story themed, let's call myself the author of this podcast and this episode will be the preface of what's to come. So I have a project here with me so that I can be working on something while we chat. Let's start with first though, with getting to know me, let's start with what I'm wearing. Um, this is what I'm wearing today is the Ripple Camisole pattern by Jessie Made Designs. And um, I will have the link to the Ravelry project page for this pattern in the description of the video below, as well as anything else, any other patterns that I'll talk about today, my Ravelry project page, my email address so that you can contact me if you are interested in being a guest on this podcast. The email is craftednarrativespodcast at gmail.com. So you can email me there and we can connect further. Um, as well as any other links or resources or anything else that I mentioned, you can find that in the description of this video. So what I am going to be working on, and I'm not sure if you can even see what's in my hands because of the camera angle. I will say I am recording on my phone and going forward, other episodes will probably be recorded differently, but I just, when I have an idea, I just can't be stopped. And I had to go for it today, even though I don't fully have all of the pieces in place for how this is gonna work going forward. So I'm recording on my phone. I'm looking at the back of my phone. Hopefully you can see things pretty well, but this is what I'm working on now. And it is just a vanilla sock pattern. I'm doing the vanilla socks on nine inch circulars pattern by the crazy sock lady. And the yarn that I'm using is freckled whimsy on her kismet base. So this is an 80, 20 superwash merino nylon base, and it's a three ply fingering and it is called Vintage Christmas. It's part of the A Christmassy Yarn Club. This is the number five, so April's colorway, and it is an eight stripe repeat. So that is the mini, I'm working on the cuff right now, and this is the full skein. And it is beautiful. All right, so let's talk about a little bit about me. Welcome if you're new here. If you're not new here to my channel, you might have already heard little bits and pieces of my making journey here and there. So I hope that you'll hang in there with me and maybe learn something new today. Um, and I know that the, since I posted my flock, oh, also my full disclosure, my dogs are in my office with me. So if you hear banging around or tapping toes, that's just them getting comfy. But, um, after my Flock Fiber Festival bit video posted, I've got a lot of new faces here, so welcome, thank you so much. Or if this is your first time finding the channel, what you're seeing now is new to all of us. So this podcast episode is new to all of us. So my name is Rachel. I live in Phoenix, Arizona with my boyfriend and our four dogs and a cat. We moved here from Hawaii with the four dogs um, in October 2021, and then we got our cat. We found her as a little newborn kitten abandoned in a parking lot um, in February 2022, so not long after we got here to Phoenix, we got our little kitty cat. She is not in here with me because she is a little uh, stinker, and she, <laughs> to put it very nicely, she would be crawling all over my computer and knocking over everything, most likely. Sometimes she can be sweet, though. Um, let's see, what else? So as far as my crafting journey and myself as a maker, it looks like I'm a little bit tangled up here already with my knitting. I first got into crafting when I, or uh, let's say, got into the fiber arts 
when I was about 10 years old. I spent a lot of time with my mom at her job and there was, I don't know how it came that got there or how I found it or whatever. There was a red, bright red skein of Red Heart Super Saver acrylic yarn and a crochet hook. And my mom knew how to crochet a little bit. She knew the basics, so she taught me and she taught me to chain and I would just chain and chain and chain and chain for as long as I could and have this huge long uh, chain of stitches that I didn't know what to do with. So sometimes I would cut it off and wear it as the world's thinnest scarf. And sometimes I would just rip it all out and start over. And that's really all I would do. I do remember her teaching me other stitches, but I never really did anything with it. You know, I, as a 10 year old, that's pretty young. So um, I got distracted by other things and forgot about it. And then in high school, my aunt was making beanies or hats, crocheted hats as gifts for people. And that's when I really got interested. I wanted to make hats myself as well. So I learned, I can't remember if it was her that taught me or she shared the pattern she was using, whatever it was, but I learned how to make beanies. And in my senior year of high school, I made my first one. It was a neon blue or turquoise acrylic red heart super saver beanie and I have a picture of it somewhere and every year I stumble across it on my Facebook memories and it just really warms my heart. Makes me feel very proud that you know as a senior in high school I sat down and was determined to learn how to make myself a hat and I did that and it's inside out. I sewed a pom-pom on the top so it I was wearing it inside out and I can tell that because I was doing half double crochet stitches and so there's definitely uh, a difference in the front and back there and that's okay it's still really really cute and I know uh, it was still really really cute I no longer have it but after that um, I didn't do much else besides beanies that I would make bags sometimes I learned how to crochet a flat square and so I would do that, I'd fold it in half and seam up the edges and then do like a double crochet strap and just make myself some little crossbody bags. And I was really proud of those, I made those a lot. I also tried to make bikini tops and even bikini bottoms, but I just didn't have a huge selection of yarn where I grew up on the big island of Hawaii. Um, I, I didn't know where to find yarn, I didn't know anything, I just, all I had access to was acrylic yarn and a little bit of lily sugar and cream cotton and I really thought that that's all that there was. I had no idea that the yarn world was so big. I didn't know that there's wool yarn, that it comes from sheep. I knew nothing about that. So that was my crochet journey for a very long time. At some point I did make a crochet Instagram but I never really did anything with it. Then in um, that continued on for years. Off and on I would pick up crochet and really it was mostly just in the winter time. I felt inspired even though it didn't really get cold where I lived there in Hawaii, you know, there's not much of a uh, distinction between seasons. So for some reason, yeah, I love Christmas. I love winter. I love watching Christmas movies. I guess being inspired by other people's cold weather, it would always make me go back to my crochet. Not that I was making sweaters or anything, but it's just it's hot and humid in Hawaii and I didn't feel like touching yarn most times throughout the year until Christmas time came around. So then in uh, 2020, my sister was pregnant with my nephew and I wanted to make him some gifts. I had the idea to crochet him a under the sea themed mobile for above his crib and I couldn't really find YouTube videos with all of the step-by-step -step instructions on how to make each of these little sea creatures that I wanted to include. So that forced me to learn how to read a pattern. And that was a huge, huge step in my making journey. I didn't, I remember trying to read patterns before and feeling like they were so confusing. And I felt like when I looked at the pattern, it was like reading a different language. And it kind of is in a way, but I learned to just take things one step at a time. That's what I found work for me when I looked at the pattern in its entirety, I didn't know it was so overwhelming and I didn't think I'd ever be able to figure it out. 
but I started to just take things one step at a time and not even read the whole instructions for the row. I literally would, whatever it said, crochet five stitches, crochet five stitches, next step, two double crochets in the next stitch, whatever it was. I would just take it one step at a time and that worked. And I was able to make him this really, really cute crocheted mobile and a bunch of other things as well. And then from then on, I just have not stopped. I logged back into my my uh, crochet Instagram page. My first Instagram handle was Kirk's Crochet Creations. And um, I got back in there and then I realized that there is a huge world of fiber arts out there. I saw that people were making some just incredible things. The clothes, the blankets, the earrings, just, it was just a whole new world to me. And that's when I also learned about hand dyed yarn. So that was a dangerous time. I learned that this can be a very, very expensive hobby. And it's just, I learned that there's just some really, really talented makers and designers and creators out there. So that was kind of how the, the evolution began of my crochet journey. So I've been crocheting for a very long time, but in October, 2021, right before Peter and I left Hawaii, I decided to take a class to learn how to knit because I was on Instagram and seeing what other people were making. I learned about the crazy sock lady and um, sock, what, summer sock camp had just happened and I wanted to participate. I was determined to participate in the next summer sock camp, so I needed to learn how to knit socks. I did crochet some socks and I decided I didn't really love those, so I thought that I would learn how to knit. And I also thought that that would be the perfect thing that I could still wear even in warm weather. So I took a class and I learned how to knit. I mostly learned through YouTube, but Taking a class was a really good experience for me because it forced me to really get out of my comfort zone because I don't love to not succeed at something on the first try and that's something that I've spent the last several years working really hard to overcome and that was one of the first steps in that. Uh, it was a good exercise in not being good at something right away and I was a crocheter so I held the yarn in my left hand but the person teaching me was teaching me to knit, you know, um, English style, throwing the yarn over and I just could not grasp that. So I also learned a lot through watching YouTube videos and I made my first two dishcloths as practice and after that I was determined to make a sock. So the Crazy Sock Lady has some great YouTube tutorials and I watched her uh, vanilla socks on magic loop tutorial and learned how to make a sock. Not on the first try, it was the second try, and that pair turned out beautifully. And although my stitches were extremely tight, so tight to where it was really hard to even get them off the needles, but um, the second pair, not so much. And since then I've really struggled with consistency in my sock, either one of them turning out huge, the other one turning out tiny. It, my tension just really is dependent on my mood. But I fell in love with knitting. I really fell in love with knitting. I love the look of the fabric that it creates and, and I don't wanna say anything bad about crochet at all because that creates a beautiful fabric as well. But there is just something about knitting that just feels right to me. And it also feels more relaxing and more meditative. And I've heard people say that about crochet also. So that's just something that's really beautiful is that we are all different and we all have different preferences. So I do not crochet very much these days. I mostly just knit. But now the next evolution of my crafting journey, and I don't remember where inspiration struck from this. I think it was just, you know, being on Instagram and learning more about yarn and, and just really being inspired by the creation of yarn and different types of fibers and different types of yarn that there is out there. And I learned that you can spin your own yarn. This I actually learned um, several years before, but 
I started to follow other people who were making their yarn and I started to watch podcasts of other people who were spinning their own yarn and to me I just I love the whole process of from scratch and in my opinion spinning is just another maybe that's not even an opinion but spinning is just another step in that from scratch process i think that it is just incredibly mind-blowing that you can not only knit your or crochet your own clothes but you can also spin the yarn for that and lately i'm diving even deeper into that and like learning about processing wool and i'm nowhere near that and but it's just this is amazing um so in November 2023, my friend Elaine and I went to the SoCal Fiber Festival in Southern California. And that was the first time I was really surrounded by a lot of different fibers. And I went up to somebody's booth and I told them, you know, I really want to get into spinning, but I'm just overwhelmed. I don't even know where to start. And she handed me a drop spindle and she gave me about a five minute demo with a little strip of uh, fiber that she had at her booth and I have not stopped since. I did really struggle in the beginning and again that was another really good lesson for me and not being good at something on the first try and I am not at all trying to say that I'm like some crazy talented person that is just good at things the first time they try them. I am saying that I often don't try things because I'm afraid to not be good at them on the first try but I stuck with spinning and I have definitely improved. I still have so, so much to learn. I think that, you know, we're always learning, right? But I, I really enjoy it. It really causes, forces me to just slow down because all I have is a drop spindle. And I have been spinning the same four ounce braid of fiber for months now. <laughs> so it is a very slow, slow journey. Um, give me a drink of water here. But I just love that. And that's spinning is really what got those gears turning in my head to just think about all of the energy, all of the intentions, all of the thoughts, the emotions that are going into our projects while we're making them. And it's just, I find it really fascinating. And I love to hear about other people's perspectives on that. And I love to hear other people's stories on why they create and how it makes them feel. and. The, the, that's what I really hope to be able to share in this Crafted Narratives podcast. So let's see here. I've got some notes that I'm looking at just to make sure that I'm covering everything that I wanted to in this introduction piece and my crafting journey. I've kind of brought us here to the present. So where I'm at now, I'm like I said, I mostly knit. I do really try to spend at least 15 minutes a day spinning. That's how I've liked to start my day lately. I still just have a drop spindle, so I'm just spinning singles and hopefully here soon I'll be able to buy a um, electric spinning wheel so that I can ply up some yarn and make an actual skein. I am attempting to participate in the DRK Spin It to Knit It Knit Along and I'm going to knit the I plan on knitting the Traveler uh, shawl. So we'll see. Uh, it's maybe a bit ambitious considering this is really going to be the first thing I've ever spun or ever knit with my hand spun, but that's kind of how I operate. When I have an idea, I just kind of have to go with it and I don't really pay attention to things that are like beginner or entry level because I think that anyone can do anything with the right amount of determination. So um, some of my favorite things to make, that's hard to say because my favorite thing to make has kind of always been beanies, but that's changed a little bit. Once I learned how to knit socks, I would say that socks were my favorite thing to make, but lately I have just not been in the sock knitting mood at all. And I know that that's what I'm working on right now, but this was just really the easiest thing that I could grab to to have something to work on while we record this episode. But um, I've really been into garments lately. I said at the end of last year that 2024 was going to be my year of sweaters. I really look forward to 
um, getting into the fall and winter season and having a hand knit sweater to wear. I've done pretty well so far. I've knit two sweaters in the year 2024 and I have plans for two more before the end of the year. Fingers crossed I can make that happen. Um, I already have the yarn. I already have the projects picked out, but I'm finishing up my last summer project right now. I'm currently working on the seaside shirt by the little wolf knits so that's i'm working on i'm probably about halfway through that and once that's completed then i'm going to dive back into my sweaters and hopefully finish two more before the end of the year but um that's just a tentative goal i try to not make quite too strict of guidelines for myself when it comes to knitting I'm someone that my brain has a lot of very strict rules on the way that I do things and um, sometimes it can be a little bit crazy. So I try to let crafting be the one thing that I can just really just go with based off of how I'm feeling and not telling myself that I need to, things need to be a certain way. That's not always the easiest for me, but yeah, I try to just let the knitting and the crafting just go with the flow based off of how I feel in the moment. Um, let's see here. What else do we wanted to share? So finding inspiration. I, well, yes, this was something I wanted to share about is how I find inspiration for the things that I make. And really that comes from, I love making garments and things that are, that I can use. And I'm not a huge blanket maker because I don't love to do the same thing over and over. Actually, now that I say that, I don't think that's true because I make the same socks over and over. Um, I don't love making blankets. I don't know why, we'll just leave it at that. But I do love making garments. And um, the way that I go about choosing which garments I want to make is often just being influenced by Instagram. Um, but also looking at what I have in my wardrobe and what I feel like I need. I really try to build an intentional wardrobe and I like to think that I'm a bit of a minimalist or at least I strive to be. So I look at what I, what I already have in my wardrobe and what I feel like it's missing and I look for patterns based off of that. And I'm also somebody that likes to have a pattern picked out before I buy the yarn. If I buy yarn and then try to find a pattern that feels extremely difficult and overwhelming to me, I often feel like it's so hard to line those two things up when purchasing yarn first because I'll find a pattern that I think would be really, really great with that yarn, but it's for a different yarn weight or I didn't buy the right amount or I have way too much and then I'll have to find another project. So. To me, it's easiest if I have the yarn, if I have a pattern picked out and then the yarn. So my inspiration comes from what's missing in my wardrobe, what I'm seeing my favorite desire, designers and other crafters post about on social media, and <clears throat> then finding the perfect yarn to go with said pattern or finding the perfect pattern that matches what I have in my head for what I need for my wardrobe. Um, I also want to share a piece of advice for other crafters as we're, we're wrapping up here in this first episode. Um, some advice I want to share for other crafters or for other makers in general or just creators, and that is just do it. Just go for it. This goes back to what I was saying a little bit ago and being afraid to get started because you might not be good at it. There is no harm in trying and failing. And really, failure is subjective I think you know if you at least try then that's not a failure that's that's you succeeded you tried you did something and I think that that's really amazing and that's advice that I would give to my younger self that's advice that I would give to other creatives is just do it just go for it it does not hurt to try I know it can be scary to put yourself out there and I really was feeling that at the start of this podcast episode actually just for full transparency. This is something I've been so excited about and when I sat down to record I was like I'm scared. This is a bad idea. I don't think I can do it and I decided to just go for it. I'm taking my own advice here and I'm just going for it. And also just one final thought to go with that and that is that we're all always learning. 
So you don't have to get it right on the first try. You can try again. As long as you're not harming anybody, usually you'll get another chance to try again. And I just want to thank you for joining me here on this first, this first, uh, the cre listening to the, the preface here, the creation of this podcast. It's, I'm really excited to see what's to come. I already have our first guest speaker lined up, so I hope that you'll join us back here for that, that first chapter in this new journey together. I hope that if you are interested in joining me and sharing your story, that you'll click on the description of this video to find my email address. Again, it's craftednarrativespodcast at gmail.com and reach out to me so that we can make something happen. Thank you so much for being here and I hope to see you next time. Bye.